Welcome back, guys. We're here yet again with another show. You know, these this actual shows are the ones that I like because we just go off the cuff. I usually lead it, and then I just try and stump Ray and let him talk. So today, the topic that, uh, that just came to my mind while we were just outside talking to a friend is addiction. You know, not addiction, oh not addiction, not hard addiction. I want to talk about the soft addictions, you know, how people... Like, oh, I got to eat this. I got to eat that. I got to drink oh, this. Okay. I got to drink that. So I don't want to talk about nothing crazy, no drugs, no hardcore drugs. But Ray, I want you to talk today about the soft additions, you know, like the things that I've talked to you about, like giving up chicken. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Go ahead, man. All right. Um, soft addictions. Soft addictions. This is a you, ain't got, you ain't got nothing to say. No, no I got a lot to say. I let's got go, a lot let's to go. Say. Soft addictions. Uh, the thing that comes to mind is my love for cake. I love cake. Sweets. Oh, uh, yeah, sweets. <laughs> All right. So, sweets is an addiction that probably, I would say, as high as 90% of the world is. Uh, got that nobody even think about until they get sick and uh, come down with something like sugar diabetes and then you come into grips with the addiction you got. I personally almost died because of that one addiction. He said not to go into uh, some of the hardcore addictions but uh, because I'm so well rounded in those, also, I'll just. Touch. I don't know if that's a good thing, man. <laughs> <laughs> it may not be a good thing, but but, it's, so but, well but it, 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 it's a true thing, yeah. you know. Uh, alcoholism, um, crystal meth, cocaine, all of these are the ones that we most talk about. But let's get real focused and serious about. The true addictions fried chicken mm -hmm. barbecue ribs oxtail mm. oxtail mm -mm -mm. just just talk about the pig period you know um when it's all said and done all of us will look back on our lives and find out that we talked about addictions and we focused on the addictions that family members have around alcohol drugs master whatever heroin but if we really look at our own personal lives of how addicted we are to fried chicken how addicted we are to the cake that's in the table or uh, cookies or sodas or chips i was addicted to uh rock star or should i say uh, 99 cents rock stars because they uh provided the dollar for the big can but I needed that energy trying to work 12 hour shifts, whatnot. But the addiction that I got to that acidic drink was unbelievable. And it made me very ill and almost, you know, um, it caused me to be retired right now. And I was in so much pain that I, all, I sometimes say I almost died from it. But it just took me to oncologists uh, that were able to give me diagnosis around multiple myeloma bone cancer and all kinds of other things that an acidic condition will lead you to believe you're going to die because of how bad you feel around having too much acid in your system. I talk about obesity, but I could talk about being uh, slim. I've been slim my whole life. and uh, overweight was not something that I had to worry about. So eating as much cake and pie and anything else I wanted to eat was just something I did until all of a sudden the food turned on me. You know, I no longer have any of the uh, other addictions going on in my body. And so everybody wanted to believe that it was my past life of smoking weed or my past life of being an alcoholic that was causing me to be in the state or condition that I was in. But it was my present life of 
over overindoing it on the cake now because I got all of these other things out of my life, but I was eating a pack of cookies every day and a half a bowl of ice cream. I was Dang. sitting up and that was a nightly thing that I was doing. That's a lot of ice cream, man. Oh, but I love ice cream. <laughs> you know, so it was it was- wasn't hurting nobody but me and I didn't even know it was hurting me. I just knew I was enjoying it until I would wake up in the middle of the night soaking wet because the sugar had turned on my body and was running out of me. It's like I was standing outside in 109 degree weather. But when I finally came to grips with that, now my oncologist was telling me that uh, she thinks I'm gonna have bone cancer. So now you wake up and try to figure out, oh, was it the alcohol or, oh, was it the cake or whatever it was? You don't have to worry about that. You just have to try to fix it. And because I didn't have alcohol on the plate, I didn't have cocaine, I didn't have none of the other vices to fix other than just food. So I'm trying to talk to all of you people out there to think that you're doing good because you can still eat all of this stuff that ain't nobody telling you or the information's out there, but you just ain't comprehending, you know? Until your liver go out, you don't realize that alcohol really ain't your friend. Until, you know, your pancreas is going out on you. Oh, well, sugar might not be my friend either. But the whole thing is you get all of these signs. Like I just said, waking up in a puddle of water at 2 o'clock in the morning or 3 in the morning because my body is rejecting the sugar that I am overdid it on. Or it's not taking that spaghetti and all of those carbs that I just put in at 10.30 at night and I'm uncomfortable. So when all of that keeps happening to you, then you got to reassess what you're doing with your food because it's nothing other than your day-to-day habits. Are you supplementing with something that's going to cause you to uh, get acid out of your body? Alkali condition is where we all need to be, but if you're not going to work on getting your body into an alkali state, then obesity is not going to go away. And if you're thin like me, the acidic condition and looking like you're anorexic all the time is not going away. You know, since I got involved with supplements and Immunical in particular, gaining 15 pounds when I've been trying to gain weight ever since 2015 when I was told that I had this illness and I went on this major fast to get all of the toxins out of my body. I got down to 160 and I could never get past 165. All of a sudden I run into Immunical and it starts working on my immune system, glutathione kicks in and here we go. I'm getting healthy. I think it's crazy because a lot of people don't understand how addictive sugar is. Like the uh, science says, like, I mean, I know it, but I still eat sweets. Mm-hmm. I, I consume a high quantity of sweets and I know sugar is addictive. Okay. Science says it's more addictive than cocaine. But it's like what it does to your immune system over time it is, yeah. is what's ha- what happened to you. Oh, uh, yeah, man. It happened to me in a big way. And... I turned to sugar to get away from some of the other vices. So uh, as I would move away from alcohol or I'd move away from uh, doing uh, cocaine or crystal meth, I would go to sugar. I would eat more cookies. I'd get the cakes. And and all of that gets you by and gets you out of that addiction, Mm -hmm. but it creates a new one. Yeah, yeah. And so when you create this new addiction to uh, half a gallon of ice cream, vanilla in particular, uh, I, you know, just had to look back on what I was doing was exchanging one thing for another. Uh, I can remember when I was trying to get off of uh, cigarettes and I replaced nick the tobacco in uh, the cigarette for a vaporizer mm-hmm. and. I'm still trying to wean myself off the vaporizer now, but 3% nicotine in my body is better than what I used to face with trying to smoke a half a pack a day. Dang, that's a lot, bro. I was trying to smoke a half a pack. Most days I smoke a pack. So trying to smoke a half a pack 
was a big job for me. So when I was able to remove the whole pack yeah. through vaporizing and only get 3% nicotine in my body, that was a good deal for me. So for the last, I would say, seven years, mm -hmm. I've been on the vaporizer. And now I don't have to have it in my hand or in my pocket, just like I don't have it right now and haven't had it for hours. Mm -hmm. See, mentally, I'm healed of that. How much, how much of the soft addictions do you think is mental? Or how much, because it could be mental, but not conscious. It could be subconscious. Because, you know, it's like, for me, sometimes whenever I feel like, oh, I'm, I'm this, I'm that, I feel a certain way. I know if I go eat some more, if I go do this, if I go do that, then I'm going to feel better. A lot of people eat because of stress, this, that, that. Do you, how much of it do you think is mental in terms of these soft addictions? I think that it's all mental mm. because we have a choice. And it's just like, Right now, I mentioned my vaporizer. There's something that triggered in my head says, okay, it would feel good to relax and have that feeling. Yeah. But because I don't, I don't have it uh, pressing on me mm -hmm. mentally anymore, I can mentally put it to the side and say, well, whenever I get home to yeah. relax, it'll be fine. But there was a time that I had such a compulsive behavior going on around that that the world was going to stop until I took that puff. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to stop doing this and go and address that feeling. Do you think, do you think that same kind of mindset is what's stopping people from um, changing their diet, getting fit, you know, making the changes that they need to, to do to be able to live a better life? You know what, man? That's a big thing that you just said there, and I like to tie it into wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, with the first wisdom being at the bottom, if I'm gonna put them in order. I get knowledge of something, I gotta comprehend it, which is trying to get an understanding of it, and then I gotta take some kind of action, which is where your wisdom comes in. But if you don't get good knowledge about it, I can't tell you why I want to move away from eating beef if I don't understand that it, I don't want the blood. Yeah, and, or and, pork. And, and, and you know, same thing with pork. It, it, it'll just keep manifesting whether it be pork or beef mm -hmm. or a cake. Rice, you, you, rice whatever. for me, I'm trying to get away from eating rice. You know, I found out that there was a, a certain level of arsenic in rice. Yeah. I've been eating rice. I mean, I'm a poisonous dude because I've been eating rice my whole life, and I really I, don't want to quit up, right now. I grew up on rice. You know, so I, I actually should be dead right now when it comes to rice, but, you know, the arsenic must not be that heavy because I'm still here. Yeah. So it's just like, it's like all of the other ones. Yeah. You keep moving away from it if you get a chance. And all I can tell you, fans, is... I ain't quit rice, but Max will tell you I ain't quit cake either, so <laughs> I just slowed down. Yo, he, and, got, he got mad at me one time. I took some cookies. Oh, he took my cookies. <laughs> like, boy. He didn't talk to me for three days. <laughs> <laughs> it was so bad. <laughs> it just, you know. <laughs> my trying to quit addictions is on my own terms. I don't need Max to take my cookies when I know the cookies was bad when I bought them. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so let oh, me man. pick my poison. <laughs> Y'all keep picking your own poison like I'm picking mine. And you know what I'm saying? I can't tell none, none of y'all how to quit, when to quit, why to quit. I can tell you what to do if your you body. don't quit. Yeah. If you don't quit, your body going to give up on you. Yeah. It's going to be signs. And you're going to have to address them signs so that you can make a good decision. Back to my wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. We always go with the wisdom first, but it's impossible to make a wise choice if you got no knowledge and no understanding of the knowledge that you're trying to be wise about. So get you some knowledge 
whatever book, college, teacher, mentor, you can sit up under and get your mind saturated with as much uh, positive stuff that you can handle. I don't never think that it, you can overdo it on knowledge. Understanding the knowledge is really, really important because now you can make a good decision on how to move with correct and whatever's how wrong. Act. How to act based you know? on that. And the main thing is you want people to perceive whatever you're doing as an act of wisdom. You're doing it from a, a true perspective. Your heart is right. Your mind is set. You got the right knowledge. And you making a move on something that you have expected results and ends from. I expect my healing. I expected it when I started my journey. But the bottom line is, if I don't keep digging for more and more information, Every I don't day. run into a munical. If I don't keep digging on how to comprehend and understand that information and then articulate it back to you guys, how I feel on this product or how I feel about certain information, because all information ain't good information. You look for the, the, the full body of the information. You know what, keep everything in context is all I'm trying to say. You know, if you study in the Bible, you don't want to just throw a scripture out there or whatever. You want things to be in context so that you get the right platform for that information. Talk, talking about context, you were telling these people to, to do whatever they want. Is that, is that the right context you want? You know what? I say that from the perspective of I am not going to ever tell anybody how to quit something, yeah. when to quit it. Those are only decisions that you can make personally. Mm -hmm. Your body will be the real uh, judge of that process because mm -hmm. if you don't listen to your body, then it will quit on you. And I have had a couple incidents where I just passed out. Just, I'm not high, nothing. Just the mind goes off. And it's those times that you really understand that you don't wake you up and you ain't even got the ability to put you to sleep. So when you come to grips with that, everything else will start to come together for you mm -hmm. because now you will try to identify with the factor that I ain't in control of nothing, not even me. I just have a, a responsibility to make some good decisions while I house in this body. And I ask God to help me with that because for my lights to go out and I didn't try to shut them down, and for me to be walking around hoping that I would get better, but I found out I had to do a lot of work in that process. I'm just grateful to be able to share with you guys my journey, 100%. This, prog this program that Max and I are doing is 100% from the heart for me to be able to share uh, and possibly grow from uh, of everything that I've learned about Immunical and uh, get it out to you guys so that you can experience what I experienced from uh, a doing better perspective in your body. But from a financial standpoint, the guy, Max, that introduced me to it and the guy that introduced him to it, Doug, they are moving in a financial direction that I want to move in with this product. The product is not cheap, but nothing good is cheap. Investment into your own well-being is pay me now, pay me later. A day in a hospital is not cheap. Mm -hmm. So would you rather deal with the pain, the suffering and all of that that's going to come with that process or catch yourself in this mode? Before it happens when you can invest in yourself, stay in your body, and have a good life. That's all I'm trying to do at this stage of my life is 
be a good citizen. And to be more specific, be a kingdom citizen. With all of that said, this has been a great show. Max is a great host. Uh, I'll probably you know, dominate the show, but... It's all good. You know, the, the bottom line, he want to hear me talk anyway, so... It's true. Thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, come back next week. We'll do another episode and just keep the process going and educate you guys. You know, if you guys have any questions, ask us. We feel like it's our responsibility to let you know what's happening and also share this information we got. So if you have any questions, any concerns for me, for Ray... For anybody, just ask. And uh, we're just trying to help as much as we can along the way. Here we go. Peace.